Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to our course Physical Chemistry 101. My name is Dr. Lauth and our topic today is Electrochemistry Part 2, how to calculate electrode current and potential. Let's place two electrodes into an electrolyte. Possibly apply a voltage and measure a current. The current strength is caused by the migration of ions, which can be quantified by the ionic mobility and ionic conductivity. However, what happens to the ions at the electrodes? In the external circuit, electrons flow, forced or voluntarily, from left to right. On the left-hand side, therefore, Electrons must flow from the electrolyte into the metal. Such an electrode is called an anode. On the right hand side electrode, electrons flow out of the metal into the electrolyte. This electrode is called the cathode. A cathode is characterized in that electrons move from the electronic conductor to the ionic conductor. An anode is characterized in that electrons move from an ionic conductor into an electronic conductor. Note that anode and cathode cannot be generally described as positive or negative. The polarity depends on whether the electron flow passes freely in a galvanic cell, that battery, or is forced in an electrolytic cell. The exchange of electrons at an electrode is expressed by the so-called electron transfer reaction. At the cathode, an oxidized species takes electrons from the metal and thus turns into a reduced species. At the anode, the reverse is true. A reduced species gives electrons to the metal and becomes an oxidized species. Anodic current flow is always coupled with an oxidation, loss of electrons. Cathodic current is always coupled with a reduction, gain of electrons. Usually, the transfer reaction is written with the electrons on the left-hand side. In electrolysis of copper chloride, chlorine is produced at the positive terminal. So the following oxidation reaction takes place. In zinc carbon batteries, zinc, the negative terminal, dissolves in this oxidation reaction. Both processes take place at the anode. In an electrolytic cell, the anode is a positive terminal. In this case, oxidation is enforced. For a galvanic cell, the anode is a negative terminal. Oxidation proceeds voluntarily. In the electrolysis of copper chloride, copper is produced at the negative terminal. The following reduction process takes place. In the lead dioxide lead battery, the reduction of lead 4 to lead 2 sulfate takes place at the positive terminal. In the electrolysis cell, the reduction is enforced, the cathode is negative. With the galvanic cell, the reduction runs voluntarily, the cathode is positive. In the zinc carbon battery, the negative terminal is the anode. In the electrolysis of alumina, the negative terminal is a cathode. As for any other reaction, the laws of stoichiometry hold for electron transfer reactions. In particular, we need the stoichiometric number nu of the electrons. Nu sub e electrons have a charge of nu sub e times f, f being the Faraday constant. Correspondingly, the ratio of the current flowing, I times T, and U sub E times F is the amount of substance N 
which is deposited on the electrodes or dissolves. This is Faraday's law, which applies to both electrolytic and galvanic cells. The Faraday constant corresponds to the charge of one mole of electrons, 96,485 coulombs per mole. If you allow, for example, a current of one ampere flowing for one day, then this corresponds to 0 0.895 moles of electrons. We need two moles of electrons to deposit one mole of copper, we need one mole of electrons to deposit one mole of silver, and three moles of electrons to deposit one mole of aluminum. So according to Faraday's law, 28 grams of copper, 96 grams of silver, and 8 grams of aluminum will deposit. Consider the two metals copper and zinc. Electrons feel more comfortable in copper, which can be expressed by their chemical potential. If you put the two metals into contact, electrons will move from the less noble zinc to the more noble copper. Copper gets negatively charged in respect to zinc. In equilibrium, there's a jump in electric potential at the phase boundary. Similarly, we obtain a potential jump if we build a combination of an electronic conductor and an ionic conductor, in short, an electrode. If we immerse a copper sheet into a copper chloride solution, two processes occur. Copper ions deposit as copper metal, thus producing an electron flow in the direction of the electrolyte. Copper metal dissolves into ions while electrons flow into the metal. Because copper is a noble metal, the cathodic current, green arrow, initially outweighs the anodic current. Thus, copper gets charged positively while the electrolyte gets a negative charge. The cathodic current will be slowed down by the resulting electric field. The anodic current will be accelerated. Eventually, in equilibrium, the solution rate and deposition rate are equal. This will result in a potential jump at the metal electrolyte surface. Initially, the electrode was polarized cathodically. The cathodic current density I sub minus has been greater than the anodic current density I sub plus. At equilibrium, anodic and cathodic current density is equal in magnitude and corresponds to the so called exchange current density I naught. An electrode is thus characterized by a so called electrochemical double layer similar in structure to a plate capacitor. When we move a positive test charge from the electrolyte into the metal and record its energy, we get a potential diagram. We obtain a potential jump due to the electrochemical double layer. The difference in potential between the metal and the electrolyte is referred to as electrode potential delta phi. In the currentless equilibrium state, delta phi is called the redox potential E sub redox. If you place a zinc plate into a zinc sulfate solution, Anodic current initially outweighs cathodic current. The dissolution rate of zinc is larger than the position rate and the metal charges up negatively. Again, in equilibrium, anodic and cathodic current density will be the same. The redox potential of an electrode depends on the reagent that are involved in the transfer reaction. Copper is more noble than zinc thus has a more positive redox potential. Furthermore, 
Redox potential does depend on the concentration of all reagents involved in the transfer reaction. A copper electrode with a one molar electrolyte has a redox potential of 0.34 volts. A copper electrode with 0.1 molar electrolyte has only a redox potential of 0.31 volts. The concentration dependence of the redox potential is described by the Nernst equation, one of the most important equations in electrochemistry. In the Nernst equation, really all values used in the transfer reaction can be found. The stoichiometric number of electrons, mu sub e, have to be included in the Nernst factor, rt over nu f. In the argument of the logarithm, the concentrations of all oxidized species can be found in the numerator and the concentrations of the reduced species in the denominator. The standard potential E0 of the electrode is tabulated in the electrochemical series. The electrochemical potential in general is a measure of the tendency of a species to acquire electrons and thereby be reduced. Thus, the higher a redox couple is up the list, the greater its electron pull. So permanganate in this table has the most positive redox potential, the largest electron pull. In our compilation, lithium metal is at the bottom of the list and thus has the largest electron push or electron pressure. Ultimately, each redox reaction is a tug of war for electrons. If you combine two redox couples, the top half reaction with a more positive potential proceeds from left to right as a reduction, and the bottom half reaction with a negative potential from right to left as an oxidation. High oxidizes low, high snatches low electrons. Depending on the chemical nature of the oxidized and reduced species, we distinguish between several types of electrodes. Metal electrodes, reference electrodes, non-metal electrodes and redox electrodes. In a redox electrode, both oxidized and reduced form of the redox couple are dissolved in the electrolyte. We also need an inert electronic conductor to measure the electron push or pull of the redox couple, platinum or graphite. The ion 2, ion 3 electrode is an example for such an electrode. Let's formulate the redox potential of the electrode using the Nernst equation. Electrochemical series gives a standard potential of 0.77 volts. In the Nernst factor, Nu sub E is 1, marked in blue. We plug in the concentration of ion 3 plus ions in the numerator, as this is the oxidized form, and the concentration of ion 2 plus ions in the denominator, the reduced form. Because both ion 2 plus and ion 3 plus are dissolved species, we have to use molarity as a concentration here moles per liter. If the concentrations of ion 2 plus and ion 3 plus ions are equal, we measure the standard potential E0 of 0.77 volts. Preponderance of ion 3 plus ions gives a higher potential. Preponderance of ion 2 plus ions gives a more negative potential. Conversely, we can say if the redox couple is in a matrix having a smaller redox potential than 0.77 volts, the reduced species preponderate. If the matrix has a greater potential than 0.77 volts, so the oxidized species predominate. This statement is generally true for each redox couple. The redox potential of a matrix, sometimes called ORP, is an equally important parameter as the pH of the matrix. 
Note that really any information from the transfer reaction can be found in the Nernst equation. Calculating the redox potential of an permanganate electrode, the stoichiometric number of the electrons, and the stoichiometric numbers of all reactants and products have to be taken into account. In gas electrodes, a special case of a non-metal electrode, three phases have to be in contact. A gaseous phase, a liquid phase, the electrolyte, and an electronic conductor, a solid phase, usually. The classic reference electrode in electrochemistry is a hydrogen electrode. Let's calculate its potential using the Nernst equation. By definition, the standard potential is zero. There are two electrons involved in the Nernst factor. We have to divide the square of the proton concentration by the hydrogen concentration. According to a thermodynamic convention, the concentration of a gas, like hydrogen, has to be specified in the unit bar and the concentration of a dissolved species, like protons, has to be specified in moles per liter. A metal electrode is easy to build. Just submerge a metal into a solution of its salt. The Nernst equation for a silver electrode will be as follows. The electrochemical series gives 0.8 volts for the standard reduction potential. One electron is involved in the transfer reaction. The argument of the logarithm will be the concentration of the silver ion over the concentration of the silver metal. Elemental silver is a solid. We have to use the unit mole fraction to specify its concentration. As we use pure silver, the mole fraction is equal to 1, so we may omit this concentration. Freshmen are often told that the concentration of a solid may always be omitted. Note that this is not true for alloys. A very common type of a reference electrode is a silver chloride electrode. This is another three-phase system. We combine metal, a sparingly soluble salt of this metal, and an electrolyte with a corresponding anion of this sort. The Nernst equation for this electrode can be expressed as follows. 0.22 volts for the standard potential E0. Nu sub E equals 1. We have to divide the concentration of the solid silver chloride, the molar fraction, by the concentration of the solid silver, also mole fraction again, and the concentration of chloride ions, the molar concentration in moles per liter. Classical reference electrodes in chemistry are the standard hydrogen electrode, SHE, with 0 0.000 volts at pH 0, the calomel electrode with 0 0.241 volts, and the so-called saturated silver chloride electrode with 0 0.179 volts. Miniaturized silver chloride electrodes may be used in microscopic applications like measuring potentials in biological cells. The relative potential of a single electrode is difficult to measure. In contrast, the difference in redox potential between two electrodes may be determined very easily. Combining a zinc electrode with a copper electrode, we may build a classical galvanic cell, the Daniel cell. To describe this galvanic cell, we need twice the Nernst equation, both for anode and cathode. Copper has a higher potential and thus is the positive terminal. Zinc has a more negative potential and is the negative terminal. At the copper electrode, electrons will voluntarily move from the metal into the electrolyte. So this is the cathode. At the zinc electrode, electrons will pass voluntarily the interface metal electrolyte in the opposite direction. And another. The voltage of the cell, the potential difference we can measure, 
corresponds to the difference between cathodic potential and anodic potential. When measured as an open circuit voltage, we call this potential difference delta E or EMF for electromotive force. Each battery is a galvanic cell. When discharging a battery, current flows exactly as drawn here. Anodic and cathodic processes occur voluntarily. If we want to charge the battery, we need to reverse the current direction. Electron flow has to be forced. Anode and cathode will be reversed, but terminals will not. Delta E will be negative. Let's have a look at the potential profile in an open circuit Daniel saw. Starting out at think metal, which has the lowest potential, we experience a potential jump to the zinc electrolyte. Passing a salt bridge, we arrive at the copper electrolyte. In the first approximation, we may neglect the junction jump, followed by the jump in potential into the copper metal. What we can measure with a voltmeter is the total potential difference between zinc metal and copper metal. An electromotive force of 1.1 volts is obtained by subtracting the potential of the zinc electrode, negative 0.76 volts, from the potential of the copper electrode, positive 0.34 volts. In a Daniel cell, zinc is oxidized and copper ions are reduced. This reaction may be carried out in a much easier way without an elaborate galvanic cell by simply immersing zinc into copper sulfide solution. In this spontaneous redox reaction, electron movement is involved too, but in the form of micro non-directional currents, which cannot be used for doing electrical work. Only in spatial separation of oxidation and reduction by building a galvanic cell with two electrodes, it is possible to combine these microcurrents and thus gain electrical work. In general, a galvanic cell may be built up from any redox reaction. Performing the redox reaction in a spontaneous way will gain the whole enthalpy, delta H, as heat. Performing the same redox process in a reversible way, that is, in a galvanic cell, we obtain Gibbs free energy, delta G, as electrical work, and the entropy, delta S times T, as heat. Accordingly, EMF delta E of a galvanic cell is linked to Gibbs free energy. F is temperature dependence of EMF, d delta E over dt, to entropy. Let's calculate these thermodynamic state variables for a Daniel cell reaction. It's EMF for 25 degrees Celsius, 1.0986 volts, gives a Gibbs free energy change or drive of negative 212 kilojoules per mole. The temperature gradient of negative 80 microvolts per Kelvin gives an entropy change of negative 15 joules per mole in Kelvin. Using the gibbs helmholtz equation, we may also calculate enthalpy change that the H is negative 270 kilojoules per mole. Using electrochemical series, we may predict spontaneity of a redox reaction. Does oxygen oxidize iron at pH 7? We split up the redox reaction into two half reactions, oxidation and reduction, and compare the corresponding potentials. This is the criterion for electrochemical spontaneity. Oxygen having a more positive redox potential than iron, it may very well snatch the ion's electrons the reaction may proceed spontaneously. For this reason, corrosion of ferrous materials in the presence of oxygen can be a problem. 
Even oxygen-free water can oxidize some metals. At pH 7, all metals which are less noble than iron may be affected. Neutral water containing oxygen has a much stronger oxidizing power. It may oxidize all metals which are less noble than silver. Corrosion is facilitated by the following conditions. A lot of oxygen, low pH, high conductivity of the electrolyte and large potential difference in the material. With the potential difference in the material, always the anode dissolves. For the cathode is protected from corrosion. By using a sacrificial metal or by applying an external voltage, we can make the material a cathode and thus protect it from corrosion. We speak of CP, cathodic protection. Contacting a metal with an electrolyte, we build up an electrode and create a potential jump at the phase boundary. Contacting two electrolytes will also result in a potential jump. This is called a liquid junction potential. We may, for instance, separate two different concentrated hydrochloric acid solutions by a porous barrier. Now both protons and chloride ions will diffuse from the more concentrated solution to the less concentrated solution. Because the protons diffuse much faster, they will diffuse ahead into the dilute solution, leaving it positively charged. The liquid junction potential may be calculated from the electrical mobilities or from the transport numbers T of cations and anions. Only if anions and cations migrate at the same speed, that is, when T plus and T minus are equal to 0 0.5, the liquid junction potential vanishes. This is why potassium chloride solution or ammonium nitride solutions are widely used in salt bridges. If we separate two different concentrated hydrochloric acid solutions by a semi-permeable membrane, only the protons may pass this membrane, we also get a potential jump at the phase boundary. We speak of a Donnan potential, which can be calculated with a formula which is very similar to the liquid junction potential formula. The Donnan potential may be used for analytical purposes, for example, in a glass electrode for determining pH. If more ions can permeate the membrane, this equation is valid for each ion. There is thus a relationship between the concentrations of these ions, which is referred to as the Donnan equation. The product of the concentration of these ions on the left-hand side of the membrane is equal to the product of the concentrations of these ions on the right-hand side. Donnan potentials are important in biochemistry. To summarize, any combination of an electronic conductor and an ionic conductor gives an electrode. An electrode is characterized by the electron transfer reaction. In equilibrium, when the cathodic and anodic currents are equal, the redox potential of the electrode may be calculated with the Nernst equation. Faraday's law of electrolysis describes the quantities of substances liberated or deposited on the electrode. Thanks for watching.